Quarantine. Oh, yep, nope. Didn't do that. What's new, man? Since the last time I saw you. A lot of work. Uh, we're trying to go live classes for adults. Nice. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and uh, we're doing all the setup. We were doing all the setup today and dry runs and stuff. And uh, there's a learning curve, you know. Um, there's a learning curve doing this. Like I'm in front of a camera talking to you guys at home, talking to Mr. Gary. Um, and there's a learning curve for all the videos that we're doing for the <laughs> video library. Uh, there's a learning curve for all the daily classes we're doing for the kids. There's a learning curve for going live uh, in front of our adult students at home. So it's just, I'm learning, I'm just really uncomfortable right now, but we all know that usually that means that uh, you're growing and you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do, so. That's right, man. Yep. Um, I, yeah. I see you uh, slicked your hair back a little bit today. You look nice, man. What's going on? I like this quarantine look I, on you. I need a haircut. Man. I need a haircut. Man. I need a haircut. Man. <laughs> That's the only thing I can do with it. Oh, like, man. I'll send a picture to everyone later. If I go like that, yeah. it just like sticks up like a munchie cheese. Remember those munchies? <laughs> yeah. I do remember cheese. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Same old stuff, dude. It's quarantine time. You know, it's, it's... You know what it is, too? You're wearing your awesome uh, instructor shirt. Um, you look sharp. That's that's. Uh... Hey, a quick little fact. Go back when I raise my hand. I realize I have a right here. So if you go back and watch the video, you'll you'll see that little. See, I, I was being a good friend, and I didn't tell Gary that he had a hole in his shirt. Yeah. Uh, but then he told me that that's really not being a good friend. Yeah. That I should have told him. It's like when you have like a piece of food in your. Sherry's caring. See, you gotta tell your friend. Sherry's caring. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. So. Things are going good. I think. I think staying positive is the key for everybody. Uh, doing everything that you're doing um, is key because you know what we're, our business is is martial arts, and martial arts is all about empowerment, uh, Absolutely. belief, you know, drive, patience, everything, you know. And kind of what we're in is that's we're kind of like in a perseverance mode right now. Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you, why did, how, how did you ever get into martial arts? So since I was a kid, I would, I mean, like growing up in the 80s, like, you know, you want so to. So I know, we <laughs> probably have a similar, similar thing. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, you always saw like Van Damme, you always saw like all these like awesome, you know, Bruce Lee, uh, Chuck Norris, you always saw these awesome people on film. Um, and it was kind of the, it was kind of the thing, you know, and then uh, for... For a period of time, my, my father also did uh, some martial arts and stuff, and he used to do the, um, they were crazy back then, the 70s and 80s and stuff, and they, they would do like the full contact like tournaments and stuff. Nice. Um, so he would always tell us the stories about that. And I was Your always- dad? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and and, uh, and he would always tell us the stories, like, you know, that they would like pretty much bare knuckle fight and stuff, nice. and you know, and the Kung Fu, like dojo and stuff. So you know, it was always kind of like like mystical. Like it was always like, like uh, mysterious for me, you know? and. Um, I've always said that I was going to try something, and um, in 2007 uh, is when I started. January, actually, January 2007 is when I started uh, Krav Maga. Um, that's pretty close to when. When you, when you started, started, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, close. yeah and uh, ever since I, I never looked back. I actually would drive by the you know the old place like almost daily, and uh, I was like. I had seen something called um, I don't know some show, and it was they sh they showcased uh, Krav Maga. They showcased actually multiple um, different um, martial arts and yeah. self defense systems, and, um, and I just, I, they came up to the Krav Maga one, and I was just like, oh my god! Like it was just completely different, completely realistic, and I was just like, all right, I gotta go try that. And since I was passing by almost daily, uh, you know, our old yeah, place, yeah. Uh, I, I stopped by. I just stopped by on a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday nights happen to be um, weapon nights, and, Ooh, that's good and and I was just after that I was hooked, man. I was just like, all right, like this is it. Um, I paid for I did two free classes, and then um, and then I paid for the year. Really? I just paid it. Yeah, I paid it all that's the front. Smart. That was smart. I paid it all the front. Well, it wasn't so much that it was smart. What it was it was I was pressuring myself to, to make sure to stick to it, you know, yeah. because I had promised myself since I was a kid that that I would do something like that, and I said, you know what? Even if I do this for a year, that, that I would I would definitely use it for that year. I mean, not to, not knowing that you know, fast forward thirteen or fourteen years later, I'd still be here and running my own school. How bizarre is that? Yeah, right. I mean, that's, that's nuts. And then surrounded by all you powerful people, so um, definitely a life changer. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know it at the time, but uh, now I'm so intertwined with the community. 
and uh, doing stuff that I never thought I'd do. So, yeah, it's an addiction for sure. I um, how did I start? Kind of similar thing. I'm always looking to lose weight and looking for the next big thing. And and uh, I have a couple police officer buddies who actually were LAPD at the time, and they were like, "You should try Krav Maga. This place worldwide out in LA. Yeah. You should try them." I live here in Orange County. I'm not going to go drive out to L.A. So, you know. Shout out to uh, Derek Levine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Google the car back thing. I don't know whatever it was, <laughs> right? It wasn't Google back then. It was like but, rotary phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and same thing. I found it was really close. And I said, I'm going to go stop by. Um, stop by. Uh, first three people I met, I'm still good friends with. Um, that would be Paul Wisdom. Yeah, Paul Wisdom. Terry, Terry McIntosh. Yeah, Terry. Yep. And, uh, Beautiful people, man. Oh, man, what's the old other gentleman's name? Um, his name's John, but I remember it's Ah, uh, John Seeley. Yeah, I know that is. Um, and those three gentlemen greeted me when I walked in the door, and I saw that they were older, older and I was like, hey, man, if these old men can do it, <laughs> I can do it. Uh, they really showed me. They taught me a lot. Yeah, those not knowing that they could yeah. throw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, those guys taught me a lot. Um, and those three really kind of, like, greeted me and welcomed Very me. Very cool. Um, I, didn't, I can't say that I loved everybody back then because I didn't. There were only a select few. Uh, but I was into Mr. D. I met him, and I was like, Whoa, this guy is pretty amazing. I met um, who else? Uh, one other person and it kept me embraced. Um, my favorite instructor back then was amazing. Still talk to him today. Still train with him. Who's that? Uh, Evan Rosenberg. Uh, I, maybe I'm saying his last name wrong. I'm sorry. Evan. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, but every once in a while, I'll go over. Oh, and, Evan. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll go over and I'll train. Did with you him. know? That he did ballet for a, oh, his kicks were amazing. So man. how I met Evan? If you see this, I I'll never forget your kicks, man. So he was teaching, and I had overheard him telling that he was a ballet instructor. I used to love and the And if like anybody that. really knows me, knows I'm a smart ass. <laughs> and so I was uh, teasing him about being a dancer. Uh, later, 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 did I know that. This guy was. Or later you found out. Yeah, that this guy's legit martial artist. Like, <laughs> you know, and yeah, he, he kicked my butt a few times, but definitely one of the most inspirational people I met when, as very, an instructor. Uh, very down to earth too. Yeah, very easy yeah. to learn from. Yeah, good guy. Absolutely. Um, but I didn't find out with all the instructors back then. There's a couple guys I to this day I think they had to grow on me. I won't mention their names. <laughs> uh, but you know, I love everybody. Yeah. And I love everybody because it. Comes I'll be. Cheap. I'll be honest with you. I, I I loved all my instructors. Um, you know, when I saw Mr. D, like the first time I went for weapons night, it was Mr. D was teaching that class, yeah. and I was just like, dude, I'm hooked. Like, you know, if, if you know someone his size can have so much power and accuracy, yeah, and, and I was just like, dude. I mean, like anybody can do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, um, I was just amazed since that moment on. And then all the instructors from there on. I mean. You know, pretty much study to understand. Uh, uh, you got to T. Stan T. Oh my guys. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, uh, man, if you guys think that Stan is serious now, you should have seen him back then. Uh, he, he's Stan is a different guy. Yeah, he's a different guy now. But you free, still free kids, Stan. Still, so still just, scary though, man. <laughs> but scary you know, understand, pharmacist. learning, learning <laughs> under, learning to understand, learning under T. You know, T had that like. Um, Kind of like power to like no matter how you were feeling you walk in and you're doing one of his classes and you'd walk out of there like strutting man like he had for something sure. in him that just built you up man yeah, for sure and, and you need that and then uh, there was other people like jimmy uh, oh like, jimmy uh, d is my yep. one of my uh so i got to work with jimmy yeah, as a guys. kid as a kids instructor and probably the most professional guy i've ever met and the most inspirational the most like positive person i ever met Definitely yeah. is one of the guys who got me into instructing. Uh, very, very down to earth. He, know, he always brought something special to the room. Um, he didn't say much, uh, but you knew that when he walked in and then when he did speak or whatever, you knew you had to listen. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, definitely. I, man, there's so many instructors. I, I could go on and on. Uh, Miss Ellison, 
uh, you know, uh, Miss Alicia, uh, oh, Miss Alicia. Yeah. I mean, even till today, man, that girl's a monster. See, uh, Alicia took a hiatus when I came in, mm -hmm. and she wasn't. I had known yeah. her, but I never really worked with her, right. and then she came back. Yeah. I actually trained with Miss Alicia. Um, it's just weird how we. I think her and I have the record for longest. Uh, black belts, I think it's like 10 years or something, Dang. but we kind of intertwined and at the times that we intertwined It was like like student student and then like student teacher and then like manager It was just it was all yeah, intertwined yeah. and then so but yeah, we have history with with, with Miss Alicia She's an awesome person uh, and ridiculous martial artist. So um, Yeah, why Krav Maga? Why, why that? Um, so Krav Maga because so like after like going through like the gamut of all these different uh, ways of self-defense and and um, and executing um, you know different moves and techniques to save your life possibly I just really narrowed down to Krav Maga because it was the first off it comes from Israel and if you know anything about Israel is man those guys are survivors you know I mean their life day in day out is about survival about living surrounded by uh, people that um, don't necessarily uh, care for them so much being in those areas, right? Um, so, you know, I really thought that it was just the most modern type of self-defense because it included a lot of the modern weapons like ARs, AK-47s, uh, handguns, knife, uh, stick, multiple attackers, um, a lot of scenario-based uh, training. So, like, all that stuff, I was just like, it's just real-world application. And at the time, um, I had traveled somewhat, and um, I just saw the power in that. Yeah. You know? Same here. Uh, if I knew if I had police officer friends that were telling me that, what? hey, this is yeah. legit stuff, you should learn this stuff, um, I knew that that's probably it. Back then, too, people don't realize 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, whatever it may be, jiu-jitsu wasn't that big back then. Mm -hmm. I probably, if I would have had, had, because I love jiu-jitsu, too, or grappling. Yeah, same whatever. here. Yeah. And, Shout uh, out to uh, 10 Planet. And, uh, you know, so... I mean, that I found this made my love, but that would have been a close second. Yeah, if I, yeah, able yeah, to yeah. I get that. it. Absolutely. Uh, that boxing, you know, I have a love for boxing too. So. Yeah. The other thing I loved about Krav Maga too is that, um, it, you know, it, it's a self-defense system. It's not, it's not a martial I agree. art. I agree. So like you're covering ground, you're covering stand up, you're covering weapons, you're covering multiple attackers, you're covering uh, defense, like while you're driving and somebody pulls a gun on you, like it's all these scenarios and it covers a lot of an actual fight, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, like right now I, I train in jujitsu. Like I said, shout out to 10 Planet, uh, Orange County. Um, but it, it's very um, limited to that mat, right? Uh, whereas uh, at the time I was looking for something that was just real world application for someone maybe traveling or something like that. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, same here. I just wanted to possibly spar too, do a little sparring <laughs> and then... I knew that, you know, you could probably do six months and then you can start sparring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. really so that, cool. That, that was one of the main reasons because I knew I could throw some fists and have fun doing it, you know. And uh, Why did you guys start Krav Maga? Think about that. I would think about that. And there's a reason why I asked that is because Krav Maga, uh, I, like I said at the very beginning, I think uh, when this pandemic came in, I could have very easily been... 10 years ago, Gary, where I could have been, like, very sheltered and very, like, upset and pissed off about not being able to do something, going out, whatever. And I think what Krav Maga has taught me is to be self-disciplined. Good. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to take care of myself, to make sure that, hey, you know what, this is just passing, this is nothing big, and... I've done so much more, and it's helped me get through some big life events, you know, very big life events. So, so for people that don't know, uh, Mr. Gary uh, went through a really big life event. I'll let you tell the story because you tell it better. But um, the reason why we have so much love for him and so much respect for him on and off the mat is because he really showed what the uh, what a black belt's made of. Uh, during his black belt test, uh, he was going through, he was actually fighting cancer and fighting through the black belt test. Uh, I'll let him explain a little bit more if he wants to touch on it a little bit. Uh, but the truth is, 
I mean, this guy has a heart bigger than a lion. I mean, he's he's he beat cancer. He got his black belt, and now he's a third degree black belt. And uh, one of our senior instructors here. So, uh, um, a lot of love and respect for you. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm not crazy about talking about. I don't mind talking about it, but I'm not one that's like, oh, I'm looking for a. I did this. I'm like, yeah, 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 pat on the yeah. back. But I just know that if I wasn't doing Krav Maga or the people that I was around at that time, I probably would have went a total different direction. Yeah. Total different direction. Because uh, what people don't tell you is when you go through cancer, you always hear the stories. Oh, I'm empowered now to go run a marathon. I'm this and I'm that. And I'm that. They don't tell you about the depression that you go through. They don't tell you about losing good friends. You gain good friends, but you also lose good friends. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't tell you all the side effects of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, between that and then at one point I was averaging for five years in a row, I averaged a person in my life passing away. Oh man. Whether grandmother, mother, bro uh, you know, friend, uh, friend of the family, this and that, but people that were very close to me. Like, for five years in a row, I had somebody pass away. I'm sorry to hear that. So, I mean, that was a big thing. Work, everything, you know. And, and then I bring that up because it's like, you're going through that now. Having to, like, building something. Yeah. And, and yeah. now you're having to, like, yeah. like, secure your feelings. Because and the reason why I say secure your feelings because it's very easy, easily you can just be, like, mad at the world. Yeah. Or, yeah, upset. just like you said, you could end up somewhere else. Like, you could end up uh, in a place where you don't want to be, and you know it's not healthy for you, right? right? Um, going through a lot of our exams uh, from day one, like going from uh, white belt to yellow, orange, green, and all and everything in between, and all the way till or through black belt. There's something that we are taught, and you learn it because somebody can tell it to you, but you got to go through it, and it's just like you, you just got to embrace that grind. Um, some, there's moments in, throughout those tests and exams that we did that were physical and mental uh, and that we were pushed to the limit uh, that you wanted to maybe crumble, maybe cry, maybe give up. But you know what? You sucked it up and uh, you just um, embrace the suck, I guess we say, right? You embrace the suck. And that's not just on the mat. That's not just to look cool on the mat or to say, oh, look at I got this badge of honor. It's because you're supposed to be able to learn that on the mat. But it's you learn that on the mat so that you apply it to your daily life. Everywhere you go, to your personal life, to your work life, to your home life, the stuff that we teach and the stuff that we live isn't just to to look cool or or to be in front of a camera or so that someone can call you Mr. Gary or you know like third degree. It's not it's not for titles. It's not for that. It's so that you apply it to your life. And mm -hmm. and honestly, going through this pandemic. Uh, opening up the business, thinking that we were just like cranking. We had built an awesome foundation and this magnificent studio um, with just top of the line stuff. And then we're just like, all right, all we got to do now is keep on showing up and doing what we're doing. And then this pandemic shut everything down. And uh, like Gary says, yeah, we can go into this really bad place or we can embrace the suck and say, you know what? We've been through some bad times before. We're going to get through this. Luckily, we have uh, everybody else that is like-minded uh, just like us, and you guys have been so supportive to my my personal family, my immediate family, and the Krav Maga family, because without you, there's no school, right? So we're holding it down. We're doing everything we can, podcasts, recording, live classes, all this stuff, because we owe it to you guys. You guys have been supporting us and, and here for us. And we have to show and practice what we preach, which means that maybe after this pandemic is over, maybe Gary and I will have a little cry or two. But for now, we're working. We're keeping our heads straight, and um, we're doing what we got to do. we got to take care of business. A little cry or a lot of alcohol. One, <laughs> one of the two, right? Is one of the two. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little cry. <laughs> uh, favorite skill on the mat? Favorite skill? Favorite skill? skill. I like to go hands-on. Um, what I mean by that is uh, it's a love and hate with sparring for me because... Um, it it, it 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 asks a lot of you, okay. So like you're sparring, you're learning a lot, you're releasing stuff, but it, it asks a lot for me. You ask for control, it asks for uh, technique, it demands that you have respect and honor, because it's real easy to 
to lose your head out there, yeah. right? You're getting hit and maybe somebody's dominating you. It's happened to the best of us. And you still got to keep your head about and your wits about yourself and respect the person that's challenging you. Because if they're challenging you, challenging you that means that their technique and skill is there and you got to respect and, and, and honor that, right? So um, it's just the, the sparring for me, I like to go hands on. Um, and, and, and I like to also work uh, stick because it's so technical and it just, it gets you to a rhythm where you could just kind of lose yourself. So, yeah. Uh, same dude. Hands on for me is like, although I'm not supposed to do it as much because of my right. throat, but, uh, yeah, I love <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, listen, it's how, many how many, how many, it's yeah, how many times yeah. haven't you sparred with someone and then just like love that person so much more because you're just like. Yeah. There's, there's just something about just you know sharing that the, that action of, of throwing and receiving and yeah. and then and then you just you know what you touch gloves after and you're like I know that person without saying words you just know each other better right and yeah and it, it's it's a humbling thing it it's is. definitely a humbling thing it is you know uh, other mindset for me is weapons uh, not so much stick I you know everybody loves. Get into that for right. say, ah, it's all right. I, I like arm locks, okay. things that I can get close up and put hands on and stuff. So I, I definitely like that. Um, when you, uh, I, I, I had some notes, but your mindset when you're on the mat, does it change or are you just happy go lucky on the mat? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> so we talked about a switch, right? And I know we, we obviously know about this, the switch. Um, we call it the switch because most of the people that you find in here are happy-go-lucky. I mean, you, you see a lot of people smiling, uh, being there for each other. It's like we always say the crowd family because that's how we kind of run this place. We, we run it like it's just one big family. But I do expect uh, that if I'm on the mat teaching or if I'm on the mat training, uh, that we put that switch on. And what I mean by that is um, when that switch goes on in me personally, it doesn't mean I'm mad. It doesn't mean uh, I'm like like digging into like some deep dark feelings or anything. It's just I get serious and I know that my mindset is in getting something done. Like what's the mission? We're gonna get this done. And yeah, there's gonna be some pain. I just accept it ahead of time. There's gonna be some pain. There's gonna be some sweat. Maybe some blood. Maybe some tears. But we're gonna get this done. And that's my mindset. I just I just turn into something else. I turn into someone or something that's gonna get this. Objective done. I don't know what it is for you. Same. Yeah, you know, your mindset definitely changes over the years, and mine's definitely changed that way too. It's a little more focused, mm -hmm. driven. Um, but don't get me wrong, because I'll talk crap. Oh, you? Really? At the same time <laughs> as, I, as I'm driven, yeah. and I think people don't see me having fun doing it. Right. And that's just something I've always had since I was a little kid. If we're going to scrap and right. whatever, I'm going to make fun of you while I do it too. And, <laughs> That, you know, it gives me an edge, actually. Yeah. But uh, the mindset has really changed for me over the years. It used to be like, go. But now it's awareness of everything. Yeah. And it's it's almost like it's really weird when you get to that point. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody or whatever, but I, things slow down for me now. Like I can see something coming and, and uh, you know, and I can have good technique doing something where before it was like, here, and I didn't see this and see this. And and uh, so that's changed a lot for me, which is a good thing. That it's is a good, good thing. thing. It's uh, it's uh, what, what we uh, usually label as like mat maturity, right? Um, it goes it goes a long way in training. Having good training partners with good mat maturity, you're usually going to avoid uh, getting hurt. Uh, you're going to learn a lot faster. Your technique's probably going to be better. Um, so the mat maturity... Is, is definitely key. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I see a book on your desk. The other one of the yeah. new questions I was going to ask you is, uh, you know, with a lot of downtime or just time, free time now, uh, do you read? What do you read? Yeah, uh, actually, I just ordered um, this book. Um, you guys might recognize that name. Uh, it's an amazing guy up in, um, what city is that? Woodland, Woodland Hills. Uh, he has an amazing school out there. He's been there for a long time. Uh, amazing instructor. Um, he has been such a giver. I'm actually going to tag him on this. He's been such a giver to the community of martial arts. Um, he has a school that's been there forever. I don't even know how many years, but it's forever. And uh, what he's been doing actually is he's been sharing everything that he's learned over the last 30 or 40 yeah. years or so. 
And he's just saying, hey, listen, guys, if you guys need to learn something new or if you guys need to read something or if you guys want to, you know, if you need help uh, in how to run your studio, this is that. He's just saying, look, sign up for my course. It's free. Um, and so obviously uh, someone at that caliber, I'm going to take advantage of that. And I signed up for a bunch of stuff after going through a lot of his courses. I've been doing that after I finish work. I'll stay an extra hour or whatever. I'll do some courses. Um, it has everything like from stuff that we do like knife and, and locks and joint locks and stuff and drills and all that stuff and it helps you teaching it helps you as an instructor it helps you as a student uh it helps you as a business owner so he has a lot of different courses so what i did is because i got so much from that i started ordering his stuff because you know what i got so much from it the only thing i can do is maybe try to help out and support in any way so i actually bought a couple books from him so this is one got another one that just came in uh yesterday um, it's on um, well, who's it, who's it by? running the studio. <laughs> the reason why I, I have a really hard time saying his far name, Boris. yeah, Far Boris. Uh, and I'm not <laughs> even gonna so butcher your name, sir. I mean, I have too much respect for you, <laughs> but I will put your, your name up. And um, so the book is called Open Hands, um, um, it's really cool. Yeah, you know, it's really funny. The day I realized I wanted to teach was the day that Bo brought him in, yeah, as, yeah we got uh, we seminar. Had and I went to a seminar, and it was one of the most, like, we had a series of seminars, and his was the most interesting, the most well thought out, and the most, like, care. it felt like he cared about what he was teaching. Yeah, I actually mentioned this to Christina yesterday. We were watching uh, some of the videos with Mr. Brent and stuff, and uh, I, I, like, it just captured, I, told, I asked him, do you guys see, like, the difference? Like, do you see his, how he teaches? It, it's just very kind. Yeah. But but there's there's something in that like he's kind. Yeah, he's not, yeah. He's not just there, he's huh? not just like this nice guy. Yeah, he's kind. But there's you know that there's still a standard that he's looking yeah. for, and you know I mean it's just it's really cool. It's it's refreshing. It's uh, he has a wealth of knowledge, and you know it's 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 good to learn from from other people. So um, yeah. I, so I I, 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 I didn't realize that that was who that was by. <laughs> yeah. But look at right here. It says what books you were uh, yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's cool. But um, yeah, man, I'm the same way. Now I am gonna probably absolutely get that. Oh, yeah. uh, at the beginning of this year, I said I'm gonna read a book a year, but I'm gonna use my friends. Uh, whatever they say they've read, I'm gonna read what they've read. So, uh, my buddy Dave Cook, who's a therapist, great guy. That's Dave. One of the most like driven per people I know. He was like, "You should read the Seven Habits of uh, Effective People." Very cool. Yeah. Did that. Great, great book. Fun book. Uh, learned a lot about myself because then I started realizing I got some bad habits, man. I need to change. We all do. <laughs> I, I need to change some bad. I, I'm not as disciplined as I thought, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so reading does that for me now. It's changed a lot. Uh, now I'll have to maybe get a book you recommend. Absolutely, or, yeah. Um, yeah, that would that would be great. Um, maybe even switch some of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to I'd start a little library. Like, yeah, we have see. a little uh, we have a little project going uh, with Christina, our program director. Uh, she ordered uh, uh, the Art of War, so she's reading that as I'm reading it, and then we're kind of uh, oh, comparing cool. notes and stuff. So maybe she'll get on the mountain. And... Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna still work towards that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, that also read David Goggins. Uh, Dude, that guy's a monster. Hurt, if you can't guys hurt me. Listen, if you guys don't know who that is, Woo! look, Google him, watch some of his stuff, uh, some of his videos. He has a bunch of videos up. Uh, this guy's amazing, man. It, it'll get you through anything you need to get through. It just shows how drive can get you in discipline and, and scheduling yep. can get you through anything. So. Uh, I know that Mr. Rafi, uh, one of our uh, third degree senior instructors here as well, um, is really into David Goggins. Uh, he actually... His last, uh, Rafi's last uh, 36 mile race was inspired by David Goggins. And uh, yeah, you were saying and, that. Yeah, and, and he actually sent me a video of when he finished the race. And uh, it's, I know it's something that Rafi will never, never um, forget. And I'll never forget the video he sent me. I, mean, I was like, Rafi, do you need me to go get you, man? Because he's just like, it's probably one of the hardest things he's ever done. But he got through it based on uh, what he had read about David yeah. Goggins and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I uh, challenge anybody to go. Google him, look him up. Uh, he has some great stuff out there. Yeah, there's some other great books, but I won't say them all at once. Oh yeah, overwhelming. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, those two books I recommend. I don't know any two you off the top of your head that you can recommend. I definitely want to read that one that you have right there. Yeah, yeah, uh, that one. Um, 
what's the other one? Man, I got a couple. I'll come ready with with a couple titles uh, next time because there's actually uh, there's a few titles uh, for specifically for what we do, uh, Krav Maga and stuff. Um, yeah, good, good, good reminder there. Uh, Living the Martial Way. If you haven't seen that one. Um, I, it's a book that I originally read back when I started martial arts here at uh, Krav Maga. Uh, and um, it talks about living life um, from the core or fighting from the core. Uh, if you read the book, you'll understand what I, what I mean by that. But what it's saying is uh, like kind of like look at your strengths and go ahead and grow from there. But always remember what your natural strengths are and build from there as opposed to trying to find so much other stuff and trying to. Uh, like reinvent the wheel per se like know what your core strengths are and grow from there and fight from there uh, cool. so that's that's a good one uh, uh, more that's what i want people to understand is uh the instructors here are always building yeah so that's what, yeah you're always building and so every it doesn't amaze me when people start finding inspirational books and yeah and then and, and how to manage and how to do yeah that. some of the best instructors the people i look up to us uh, uh, you know like i said stan hill uh which is our master instructor here, uh, T, you know, a bunch of these other guys, uh, they always say like, there's there's these young lions that are nipping our heels. Um, and they say it playing around, but the truth is we're all trying to grow. AJ, um, also one of our senior instructors always says, uh, I always look for my moving targets, you know, and his moving targets are always growing. So he's always growing because he's, he's chasing these guys, you know? Um, and, and so we all, like the best instructors, the people that you look up to uh, are usually people that are reading stuff you know, uh, that are sharing information, that are gathering information, um, that are um, intaking that information and then um, disseminating that information because uh, some information that's, that lands on my lap might mean something different for, for Mr. Gary or from his perspective. So it's always good to bounce ideas back and forth. Uh, if you have a buddy, if you have a spouse, if you have a coworker, colleague, whatever, and, and you get a chance to read a book together because that same book might mean different things or, or have different perspectives. That'd be great. That's one great way to learn and share information. Yeah, so hey, that was something I wanted to bring up and kind of pass on to other people. Very cool. Quarantine's over. Where are you going to eat? Where are you going? What are you doing? What's the first thing you're doing? I'm gonna uh, open up the doors to the studio. And we're gonna have a barbecue here. This is where we're eating. We're gonna open up the doors here. They're we're eating gonna... here all the time. <laughs> no, 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 but I'll be surrounded by so many people I miss and love, which is all of you guys out there. Um, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Like, I'm thinking of nothing else than to get this place up and running. I understand that there's gonna be some process to doing that and to getting back to quote unquote normal, uh, whatever that's gonna look like. But um, yeah, that's what I would genuinely from my heart say is open this place up have a barbecue here and just see all of you guys you know what i mean have you guys all around me uh if it was up to my daughter uh it would be taking her to disneyland so one of those two things I, I <laughs> or think, both of those uh, i think <laughs> there's so many of us would probably all be like disneyland gotta go back to disneyland <laughs> uh, i haven't seen one how about uh, yourself i definitely would be here training uh i mean i show up here every mm -hmm. once in a while but I also try to respect the, yeah. the quarantine and Abel seems clean. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it would be here. I mean, I miss this place immensely. Like, this was definitely part of my mental health, just coming just to train. So it's funny that you touch on that because a lot of times we think that we come to train to strengthen our bodies. And, and that's, I mean, we know, you and I both know that that's really not it. Right. That strengthening your body is a secondary effect of hardening your mind, yeah. right? So you come and train, you harden the mind, then the body follows. That's just a secondary effect of your mind being strengthened and, and hardened. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, and, and it has a lot to do with that mental health. Physical and mental health are just, they're intertwined, you know? Oh, so yeah. much so. Yeah. Uh, I always say... Uh, health as well. That's always what I'm yeah. like. That's what I'm you saying. Yeah. And that means so much. People people don't understand that. Yeah. You know, that's from body, mind, soul. You know, it, that makes you wealthy and successful. Yeah. Uh, other thing is, uh, I, I'm a huge Laker fan. It ruined my season this year. And I'll definitely be at like four or five Laker games. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if I can't afford it, I'll find a way. Yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll be there. Same with like baseball. I'll be at a few Angel games. Or, yeah. 
even Dodger games. You know, I'm a big, I love like that type of scene. And as much music as has been going on in my house, I love music. This guy loves music. I, uh, I definitely want to go see like somebody live now. I'm jonesing for a big concert. I'm jonesing for uh, Carlos Santana, maybe uh, some Mana. Um, uh, you know what? I'll take concerts in the park. And <laughs> some yacht rock group. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. It's just, I just want some like feeling behind it. You know, live music. There's nothing like live music. Yeah, I'm, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, definitely, I'll be at a UFC fight. Been watching no ton of old fights, yeah. dude. Favorite fighter. I don't care what type of background either. Uh, just favorite fighter. Uh, favorite fighter. I would. Jeez, that's that's a tough one, man. Um. I would I would have to say, um, man. I mean, there's so many out there. So okay. So I, I like the the. So I come from a like, like a background of like always watching the boxing and all that stuff, right? So I like people that stand up and throw. But man, the ground game. There's also a whole another just realm there, you know. And, and somebody that can put it together, you know, from standing to, to ground to very well rounded. Um, not quite a not quite a champion, uh, but what has always been a competitor is uh, Cowboy Cerrone. I don't know if you know who that is, uh, but uh, the guy can stand, he can bang, and when he goes to the ground, he's just he, he's just so unpredictable on the ground and is always attacking from his back. From and so uh, I, I I'd say uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Um, a lot of people go for the champions. Oh, that's my favorite fighter, but I, I like that every time you're gonna see that guy fight, you're gonna either learn something new. Uh, and for sure, you're gonna be entertained. So, I'm, I'm again. I'm a talker. I like guys who show up with a little grit behind them. Uh, I definitely am a Gr McGregor fan. Uh, <laughs> I, I almost, I, uh, I almost predicted you were gonna say uh, that. <laughs> I, I love the Diaz brothers. Yeah. Uh, I love Masta, Masvidal yeah. because. Oh, okay, but that guy talks, but he backs it up. <laughs> he, that's what I'm saying. All these guys back yeah. it up, man. And uh, I kind of find my. Uh, Love for the fight game yeah. I and mean, those kind of guys right there. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, boxing is one of my second loves. That's, yeah. And so I'm a Tyson guy for sure. Oh, uh, day, you know, a lot of people hated me in the in the 90s because I loved De La Hoya. I got to meet him a couple of times and I thought he was a super cool guy. Uh, I know he's got some background there, but hey, we all do. Um, and, uh, you know, Sugar Shane Mosley, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, but see, we grew up in an era where there was Friday night fights. If you lived in Orange County, LA, you had the Olympic Auditorium on, you know, to go watch fights. You had the Azteca. Yeah, you know, we, I mean that was always there. That boxing club. Santa, there. Downtown Santa Ana at the Bowl. Uh, every once a month, Menudo cookoffs, mariachi festivals, <laughs> and boxing. Hey, listen. So, like for us, on uh, was like Saturday Saturday nights, uh, the fights. I'm not joking when I say the whole family would, would gather. Yeah, um, sure. yeah my dad, um, uh, at, at the time, they owned a property with a big yard. They put a TV out in the garage. Everybody would try to find a seat wherever they could, you know, whether it was a chair or the floor, sitting on someone's lap or whatever. But it was a ton of people just watching this, like, small TV, and everybody was always, like, into it. Like, it wasn't just, like, watching. It was just, like, people had commentary. You wanted to hear your uncle, what he was saying, and then you wanted to hear what... You know, and all these different opinions of who's gonna win and how, and and you know. And, Same here. You know, difference is, is my uh, my backyard. It was like this. Okay, it was glove up the kids. My uncles <laughs> would make us fight like chickens. Out there. No, they didn't let us fight. No. <laughs> they make us fight. Yeah. So I would fight. So I was like. Hey. No, I mean one of our favorites, and I just like I remember it vividly was uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. You know, oh, fighting. Yeah, I, like I mean, just a legend. Even the legend till today. You know, um, I mean, it was just good times. So it was family. It was sport. Uh, it was food. It, it was just being outdoors, and it just—it was just awesome. It was, it was just a great, great, uh, great time. One of the things I remember growing up uh, as a kid, and my grandfather taking me to uh, Mexico, and we would go down there, and, and we would spend uh, just a day. He would go down there and be like, "We're going down there to do this, this, and this," you know, and hit the pharmacy, <laughs> uh, hit, hit hit the the marketplace where you can buy all the knickknacks. Right. And, he would treat me to so probably it was probably like a little little puppets? yeah like uh, one fifty uh, or something for it back then I was like yeah <laughs> and then every time we'd go they'd have live fights out there and yeah. that's one of the things I'd be like whoa this is amazing and then I remember just 
just getting my butt handed to me in a boxing gym when I was. So you know, like that question, like bringing it back, like you asked, like why, like why I started martial arts. Like now that we're talking, it, it probably had to do with a lot of that stuff, right? I mean, we were always watching hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, yeah, granted in a ring, um, but it was so loved by the whole family. Uh, you know, knowing that my father did kung fu at some point, and then he did some of those fights and stuff like that, and then knowing that my uncle, and, you know, it's, I think a lot of that over my lifetime had an effect for me to go over there and sign up and say, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So maybe maybe the answer isn't so simple, right? 80s, 90s was all about boxing, yeah. right? And I grew up an 80s kid, and I was all about wrestling. Oh, man, WWF. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Junk Yard Dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Snuka. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, the Yeah, The Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> Save your and take your vitamins. That's Straight up, if you had to choose one, mine is Ultimate Warrior. Uh, oh, I was a Hulkamaniac. Hulkamaniac. Right, that's fair enough. Fair I was enough. a Hulkamaniac yeah. when I was a little kid. Uh, and then, <laughs> then I was a young dad, so my son got into wrestling when he was like eight or nine. <laughs> and that's I got a second generation. So I got like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, you know. And I remember taking him to these things and I was like, yeah. You had actually been to the wrestling. Oh, yeah, I've been to a few wrestling. That's cool. Uh, true story. I was at uh, LA Sports Arena with my dad. Uh, two friends and their two dads and uh, our dads got in a fight <laughs> and we got kicked out that was, uh, as a kid I've seen my parents fight wait, not like against each other right. against other people even my mom and that's you know? the reason why Gary learned Krav Maga that's right that's, right. that's the reason why yeah, like, I'm Gary saying Gary there's a like, lot more reasons there, why there's, there's a bigger mold yeah. you know? there's only one of me yeah, that's funny that's funny um <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask that. Uh, any tattoos? Uh, I actually have one. Uh, I have one tattoo, and it's funny because I stalled a little bit because my mom would still kill me if she, you know, she heard me <laughs> say it. But uh, we we live in a. I grew up in a very strict household. Uh, my, my dad, my mom were really strict. I actually got this tattoo. Was it on your lower back? No, it's not my lower back. <laughs> and I got <laughs> I got this tattoo uh, when I was thirty. 30 maybe 30 33 i don't know the dolphin on the uh, no it's actually it's actually uh <laughs> it's actually all this area here and it's it's a it's a line and actually it looks very much like that one back there um right here so you're lying if we can't see it <laughs> no, on, i'll say <laughs> i'll save that one for later but yeah it looks like that it's just on my chest it's this whole area here. <laughs> i you know i i it's something i did for myself it i rarely show it um but it's it's just uh, it, it means something to me, and, and and I definitely got it as a as a grown up. But my mom still slapped me in the back of my head, and she wasn't happy about it. So uh, guys, if if any of the youngsters are are watching, don't do it, man. Wait till you're older. So yeah, it definitely lasts forever. Though. How about you? This is, wait, 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 let's just turn this back right here. <laughs> oh, he got me. <laughs> All right, I'll give you that one. Uh, I got a little backyard tattoo. Oh yeah. Right here. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, very backyard. This is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's as far as I go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was professionally done. <laughs> no, I never knew any professionals. Uh, <laughs> you know, just, it was with an ink pen. Yeah. And... Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no MS13 or anything. No, okay. like that. Good, it was good. just something it's stupid. Good. Good. Yeah. This is stupid. <laughs> I'm yeah. not even gonna ask anymore. Yeah. We'll we'll leave it at that. One day when we're drinking, I'll be like, "Look!" <laughs> uh, wow. That's what I'm saying. Maybe we gotta, you know, quarantine is gonna drive everybody crazy. Um, that's all I got. Really, I just wanted to catch up with you. And Thank, thanks for thanks for uh, uh, for always putting this together. Um, Mr. Gary's always uh, has his list, and he's like, "Hey, well, we gotta get together today." We gotta do one of those podcasts. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Cause I'll be honest with you guys, I get to communicate a little bit with you guys and, and feel like you guys are here with us. And I get to know uh, more in depth someone that that I care a lot for and, and that, that I consider my friend. Uh, so like these conversations that we have, every time we have them, I realize like how much we have in common and and how funny uh, it is just growing up. Cause we usually go back, do you notice that? We go back to talk about how we were growing up and stuff. And I love that. I love reminiscing about that stuff. And knowing, like, that all that had to do with how we are today, right? Yeah. 
So. And basically, that is who you are, right. Right? and you just right. don't realize it. Yeah. Um, same. I love doing these things. I, man, I'm a ham to begin with, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love doing this stuff. And and if we can do more, I'm gonna do more. If Abel shows up when he's supposed to. Oh no, I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to do this. Yeah, this should have been done yesterday. So. <laughs> but yesterday we were delivering sweatshirts that were pre-ordered uh, by all of you. Um, we uh, literally went to every address of the people that ordered them, dropped them off. Um, and it honestly, it felt great because I wasn't expecting this, but as we dropped uh, the sweatshirts off on the front door set, you know, we ran, um, <laughs> in order to keep, you know, the quarantine and distance, right? We just drop it off, leave. But most of everybody just like text us, like some people were wearing their sweatshirts already. Uh, it was just, it was just a good, good feeling. Man. It, was, like it felt good doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, lastly, I think, uh, I just wanted to point, you guys might be wondering why we always put like this Rev Gear focus mitts up. Uh, Rev Gear was a company that uh, actually helped us a ton when we were opening up this place. Um, they're a fantastic company. They sell great stuff. All the stuff we have out there from Rev Gear are all genuine leather. Um, there's no um, cutting corners with these guys. They always helped us, and I just want to showcase them. And, and uh, shout out to Red Gear. Uh, they helped us out a ton. I can't say enough about them. Um, you'll notice that we have heavy bags. We have all kinds of stuff that they have out there that they helped us with. Um, also, Hayabusa, uh, same thing. Uh, you know, they also sell gloves and stuff like that. We sell them here as well. They actually helped us out a ton as well. Uh, and Zebra Mats, can't forget about Zebra Mats. I mean, those things are like Ferraris out there, man. They're, they're the best that you can find, that you can get. Uh, and we got it all here for you guys when you're ready to come back. It's like back. driving a new car and Woo! it's only 100 miles away. Yeah, no, yeah. man. We we, we yeah. need to put some blood, sweat, and tears on those because that's what we're bonded by. And we have to keep on doing that. So I'm looking forward to the day that we reopen this. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to continue doing the live classes for the adults, the everyday Monday to Friday classes for the kids. Uh, we're still growing the video library. There's a lot going on in this pod awesome podcast that Mr. Gary put together for us. So. He's done a lot. So... Give it up for Mr. Abel. Give it up for uh, you guys. And thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you like what we're doing. Uh, give us some feedback. We want to hear from you. You can hit me up at uh, Instagram, GaryH72 uh, on, on the IG. How about you? Uh, Simpleman0707. Yeah. So hit us up. Give us some feedback. Uh, some questions that I can throw at Abel that you want to know. Uh, yeah. Danny, do you have any tattoos? I'd like to know. God bless you guys. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.